The most popular platform in the world for making a website is WordPress, site or blog. And uh, the most uh, used plugin for SEO purposes is SEO by Yoast, Yoast WordPress SEO by Yoast. And um, it's actually one of the most used uh, plugins overall, so more than 1 million is installed. And to me this is a bit strange, so I will try to demonstrate in this blog post that uh, you have alternative to using the plugin, and in my opinion they can be somewhat better. So uh, it's quite a long post for a long demonstration, and I made it a video so that you will understand my reasoning better. But just remember that I'm trying to demonstrate that uh, you can uh, have better ways than using uh, WordPress SEO by you have You can have better ways of doing SEO for your blog slash website. Okay, so this is the plugin. It's very well documented. It has a video. I will link to it in the description. And uh, I really like the way it was organized and made. So very nice. I, I almost have no objections at all. So most of the reviews are positive. It's a good plugin. It has support and it's very popular. Okay, so what does the what does the plugin? If you write a blog post, you put an article, you you create a title, a slug, a, a URL for the article, a small text, a category, and so on. And the, the plugin adds you a special box, which is supposed to help you in making the in, in having a better optimized website. I will discuss it a bit later, but um, so th this is one of the most used boxes. It lets you edit the title, so if you don't like what it's in here, you can make it a bit different. So you can make it like this, and now it's smaller. And uh, if you want to use the keyword, you can just copy paste it. And uh, I will just cut this and still too long, still too long. Okay, so now it's good. And it helps, look, you just copy paste this and now it's good. And if you want to add for publishing, uh, it, it makes no sense what I've written, but just for the purpose of showing an example. So now I have more than one yes. and so on. I should use it in other places. And it, it's quite good. Uh, I've seen people doing it a bit wrong, so um, if you... I will, I will mention it a bit later, focus here. Uh, this thing is for internal use, so it's meant for you... If, um, if you have a website, I, I will link to it. Let me just... Okay. So I made you... You should have a look at this article, which I made. And... Okay. Okay. So... Uh, in this article, I talk how to, uh, about I give you uh, quite uh, I give you an example on uh, how to make the keyword list for a website. And uh, if you establish that publishing is a relevant keyword for you, then yes, it's good to have to write it in here, for, write that keyword, and the, the plugin will help you tell tell by telling you how to use that keyword. But it's for internal purposes only, and I've seen people writing it. Uh, just to get this to yes, to, to have all of them to yes, writing it uh, poorly. So, they don't know some people that uh, it's just for their use and they don't understand very well how to use this thing. Okay, another thing, um, for is supposed to be a stop word. So, most search engines are fine if you don't include for in it. So, uh, in Romania we have de, which is a preposition, but in English it's for. 
and uh, even if the URL doesn't, the slug, the, the link of the article doesn't contain a uh, for, uh, in my opinion, this this is a very well made. So for the, if I want to uh, to um, optimize for for publishing, it doesn't have to contain the word for. But the plugin tells me I'm doing something wrong, and uh, perhaps a percent a percentage would have been much better. So let's say I I like in this example I am 80% okay. Yes, perhaps I could add four, but it's still fine. And now it tells me with red, no, no, you you haven't done things correctly. But in my opinion, this this URL is quite well optimized for this keyword, so it's not a big problem. But the plugin forces me to add four, which is a bit strange and wrong. Okay. Um, these are a bit advanced. Uh, most people don't need them. So, if you write a blog post, generally you don't want it either no follow or not indexed. Uh, the canonical URL is the plugin sets it automatically very well, so you don't need to change it. It's very atypical if you need to have something like this. Um, and most of the times, uh, yes, it's good to add to edit Facebook title, description, and image, but it can get it from the from the meta description in here. So it's generally don't need to edit them. Uh, this is quite interesting and I like it a lot because if I edit, if I write a blog post and I add an image, sometimes the image is vertical and I don't want to change it. And I want a solution to just edit it for uh, to just edit it for Facebook. And this is quite nice. So I can make a photo just for Facebook and just upload it here and it will just show in Facebook. This I like this a lot. Okay. Other things the plugin does. So um, it allows you to edit the titles. To me, this, this option quite all the times since I've used it, when I used it, it never worked. This is quite nice and uh, it looks okay, but it's a bit too fancy, I don't know. <laughs> so it's it's easy and nice, but it's a bit too much, and I will come back to this because it, it, it I don't know, it might ask for some resources, but it's, it's easy and so it's a nice thing to have. But I would prefer it would not ask for uh, resources for the blog. These are quite well made. So even the star standards one are quite made, well made. And uh, while I don't use this no index and follow ever, I will talk about this. Some people agree with no index and follow. So um, it's your choice. Meta keywords, uh, it's good. So uh, there was a time when meta keywords was uh, widespread, and uh, it's very hard to impose people not to use it. So I like that the default is okay, don't use it. But if you still want to use it, it's okay. And they tell you you, you have no reason for using it. it they do it okay. This is good, so if you, I will give you some alternatives to this, but if you just want something quick and easy, this is a very good solution. Okay. So. I told you about the focus keyword. It's just... Uh, so it's just for internal use. I, I wanted to make it very clear. Another function, I don't know, the link was uh, a bit strange. So if you want to have uh, XML, we can have a uh, sitemap, sitemap XML, XML for Google, and uh, breadcrumbs. And I think they are quite well optimized even for Google. So they use schema.org and they, they're quite ma well made. Uh, a thing which I generally change, uh, so at RSS, I the right, right now the plugin is deactivated, so it can't work. But at RSS, um, it adds a code. So the first thing I do when I I I, 
activate the plugin is the following. Go to RSS and remove that code. I will just show you. Okay, so I activated the plugin and uh, in here it it has some some post. When I first install it, it some it got it's got something like this, author link and blah blah and something like this. So I, I would suggest not to use it, but it depends. So on most websites I don't need that because it makes my visitors a bit angry in my opinion. But some people might uh, want to include it. But I generally don't use it and I don't like that it's by default do this option. And the other thing which I, ch I change, I go to titles and metas and at archives it's this is checked. And I don't uh, like it and I, uh, I always change it. I always uh, remove this. Okay. This is quite well nice because it allows me to mass edit the titles and descriptions for uh, lots of uh, things. And this is quite well because uh, it allows me to get settings from other plugins. I like this a lot. This is uh, this is very well. So if I well made. So if I go to options and um, and uh, check this option. I don't want to, a search engine to index my website. Immediately, the plugin tells me, and uh, until I click this button, it will tell me constantly. So it's a very good option. So as long as the option is checked, the plugin will tell me. So I will do a live demo. Now, even if I go to writing, it's it's still telling me, and I have to click it to make it disappear or to uncheck it. If I put another plugin at the same time, called Google XML plugin, I will recommend this plugin. Or perhaps other plugins, I'm not sure, I, I haven't tested them all. But even if I put a plugin which uh, uh, WordPress SEO knows might interfere with the functionality of this plugin, it will tell me. Perhaps it's not very nice of them because the first option is, okay, deactivate the other plugin, uh, leave ours alone. and uh, it also gives you the options, okay, I will disable this function, but uh, okay, the, the warning itself is a good idea because uh, it's a good to know that you're part of an ecosystem. So I like this implementation. The problem, the problem is that um, it tends to happen the, the following thing. So Usually, it happens with the Nero, okay, with the CD burning. You want something to write a CD, and it's a simple software, and you can't have too many options writing a CD. So, uh, speed and some there are some settings, but not too many. And after a while, you as a CD, uh, as, as a producer of uh, software for uh, burning CDs, you want to make things better. You want to give some extra functionality. How do you do that? Generally, you do this by uh, adding some other functions. And currently, Nero has become very big. It's a huge software. It partially happened with Office uh, software. So Word is fine, PowerPoint, Excel, but uh, at some point there are so many things doing and if you just want Office with a simple thing, you, you generally don't understand even what you get. And uh, I think the, there is a bit of a problem of having a software that does too many things because it, it requires some resources. And to test my theory, I have uh, used this plugin. It's linked in the description of the video and in the, the description of the article. It's made by GoDaddy. Uh, it's not as, pop, as uh, popular as uh, the plugin by, made by Yoast. But I think it's a good plugin and you should try it if you haven't used it so far. And uh, so when I used it the first time, I had uh, much more more plugins. So I had more plugins active and some of them uh, I didn't need so much. So Yahoo Messenger, where is it? So <laughs> each, each time a visitor entered the website, it would be like almost... Uh, so a very small time would be dedicated just to show some emoticons, so I disabled it. And the contact form was only used on uh, 
the contact page and I just replaced it with an email and made that email uh, an image so it's the same functionality from my part and uh, just just make things more simple and uh, so some other plugins which I didn't need so uh, after I did this I disabled some of the security plugins okay the most uh, resource hungry plugin was WordPress SEO by far and I have tested this on other websites this is another website which I manage and in here again WordPress SEO there are other web plugins which I can't disable but WordPress SEO I I, um, I can so Jetpack also requires lots of resources and um, Redirection by uh, there, there is a plugin called Redirection. It's a great plugin. I loved it when I saw it. Oh my god! So when you edit an article, you just uh, you can forget about uh, having bad links or not working. While the plugin is active, even if you change the URL of the post for ten times, the visitors who can still get to your page. I think I generally try one or two, but I think it might work even on ten. I'm not so sure, but. I think it should work. And um, I like that plugin a lot. But it requires an enormous amount of resources. So I just disable. Okay, I will lose some visitors, but the ones which I will gain will be happy. So I prefer some happy less users rather than more users but unhappy. So I disabled some other plugins and done some tests, still the, the same problem. So I thought about it, how, how should I replace the plugin. So I've done this for uh, a few websites of mine. So uh, I've been doing this, okay, we don't want the plugin for about half a year, uh, almost a an year. And while I miss the great functionality of the plugin because it just activates and it tells you, look, you have robots.txt something. You, it's, it, it's got some good things. But other than that, I, uh, I found some replacements for uh, most of the functions which the plugin has. And to me, they're okay. So I'll just uh, first uh, I will mention them all. And then I will show you what uh, what are, were the results for Lumia SEO PPC website which I uh, manage. Okay. So um, this is an article which which tells you how to add the uh, OJEG Open Graph, like Open Graph description, Open Graph title, Open Graph image. Okay. I don't know what happened. Where are we? So here. So this is a plugin which also has a problem. So it's the same problem with the redirection. Okay. If you if you use the solution which I provide in this article, you should test it with this URL. So you just take this link and go to this address. You need to be logged into Facebook and do it, if you click fetch new uh, scrape information, it will get the current information. Also, if you have, a, if you post something on Facebook and it doesn't show right and you correct it on your website, use this tool to get the latest information because otherwise you just need to wait for uh, for a while. Look, for 10, 29 minutes it hasn't scraped. So if I get it, now it's now it's current. Okay, this is for Twitter, the same thing as above. There are for other social networks, to me I, it's, they're not so relevant, but you can surely find for other social networks. If you just want to edit the meta description and meta title of the of, of uh, articles, categories, homepage and other pages, you should have a look at these articles. So this is for title. And this is for title, which also adds the description. And this is for description. This is a plugin which uh, does something which I can't replace in uh, uh, WordPress SEO. It's called the XML sitemaps. It's very useful, but uh, despite this, it's, it doesn't require very many resources. It's a small plugin, so I, I don't bother replacing WordPress SEO, which to me is a big plugin, with XML sitemaps, which to me is a small plugin. 
Okay. Uh, so all of these are functionalities for, of WordPress SEO. Another one is authentication with Google Master Tools, which you can do manual. There are solutions to manually uh, authenticate a website other than using WordPress SEO, which is good. So WordPress SEO does a good thing, but it forces you, once you use it a lot, it, it will be very hard to give up him because you will have to do this all, all of these things and just check it. So it, it will be hard. But if you use it right from the beginning, use these solutions, it will be simpler to give up. Okay. For canonical URL, you need just this code. If you add this code, you will have a canonical URL. And it works, I have this solution on my blogs. Okay. This is for, so, for no indexing. Um, a website has uh, more pages, and if it's a WordPress blog, it generally has two types of uh, articles. One are blog posts, and another one is pages. So you can have an article like a blog post, and you can have an article like a static page, home about, contact us. Okay, so the blog posts can have categories and tags. Now the question is, if the same blog post appears as a single entity, then appears in categories, then appears in tags, shouldn't this be considered duplicate content? And uh, the answer varies, because some people say, yes, it, it might be considered, but still you should allow Google to index it because it knows how to handle it better than you. And other people say, no, you shouldn't allow Google to think for himself. You should tell him, look, I want this indexed and I don't want the other thing indexed. And it's a, it's a, it's a conflict, so it's, it's not well settled. So some people say in one thing, some people say in another way. Uh, I personally prefer to let it index it and just let Google handle this, but other people advise of not indexing this category, so it's not a clear uh, thing. Okay, for schema.org, so you have to decide because these people tell you, okay, you should uh, not index them, and uh, these people say, okay, yes, you should, and this is the conclusion. Okay. If you don't, if you want to implement it, this is the code you need to insert. Okay. So I told you about all these things. So I have had the look on Luma SEO PPC website and uh, decided what should I keep and what should I uh, dis disregard regarding uh, WordPress SEO plugin. So what do I need? For this, I, there is a code. I, it's very useful, this code. I used it. Okay. So I, I need this. I don't specially need this. Even with the plugin, I, I, it wasn't set up. This I need. Uh, I don't manually set the meta description, but I need a code for meta title. And uh, I need uh, the meta description to be taken automatically for, for the, from the first uh, words. Okay. I need the plugin, so I installed it. I manually added the website to Google and Master Tools and Bing. I need this code, it's a just a line, so very simple. I don't use this. I don't use this. To me, the option of ignoring it is better because it's, it's just a blog, it's not something, so generally it, it doesn't show anything at all, so it's just a wasted uh, effort. Okay. So I took, uh, this is the website, oh, this is for schema.org, and you have a plugin for schema.org. Okay, so I took the website, and uh, this is the, I, I ran some tests, so this is the, these are the tests with the WordPress SEO plugin uh, installed, and XML sitemap uh, deactivated. And the other settings are pretty much the same, because even if I, if I had some tags, it wouldn't uh, bother me if I set the exact same permalink as uh, WordPress SEO, so I just ignored it, even if there are two canonical links, uh, Google will know how to handle it, because they both point to the same thing. And uh, 
OG, OG description, OG image, again, even if uh, WordPress SEO was, was setting something, it was setting the same thing which I would do with the, this thing. So I, I, I didn't change the code. So the only difference between the tests is the following. In the first set of tests, WordPress SEO plugin is activated while uh, Google XML sitemap is deactivated. And in the second uh, test, Google XML sitemap is activated, and then I deleted, I completely deleted WordPress SEO. So one time, this time with WordPress SEO active, and uh, the next time with Google XML sitemap uh, plugin active. Okay. So this is the test. Most of the most relevant are the overall grades and uh, the speed. So this is for homepage. And let's have a look. This is for homepage. So pretty much the same result. Okay. A minor decrease in speed, but it's very small and perhaps because uh, we entered the same web page, perhaps it loaded fast. I'm, I'm not so sure, but it, there were only 3 milliseconds, so it's not uh, too much of a difference for the homepage. Okay. This is for an article for 80 and 8066. It's it's very minor difference. Perhaps an increase, but it's it's a minor difference. It's, it's very small. And this is for uh, uh, so both of these tests had the uh, cache activated. This is for homepage, four two two one six four. This is faster. This is slower. So okay, four nine two nine. 518. <laughs> it's within the margin of error. It's not a very big difference. Okay. So this is the test with the, the plugin the plugin activate WordPress SEO. And this is the test with the XML sitemap. As you can see, the XML sitemap is not even in the top uh, 10 plugins which uh, required. So the 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 load on the web, the server decreased by a little, not too much, but a little. Like it, it still was, uh, it's, it's still a bit uh, significant. So um, now I tested the new version. I tested the URL, and this is how it looks. It takes the image from the blog post, and most of the things are correct. What I would do better? So it, there are there is room for improvement. Uh, I would remove the special character. So I write with the oh, you should uh, special characters in Romania and this should be removed from meta description. Uh, I, sh I would force the plugin to cut it. So if the meta description is like this and it's more than 155, I would just cut it to the desired uh, size. This would be better. Uh, if there are more than one image to a blog post, so this is a blog post, it has a video, a map, and uh, two images. Look. Perhaps this is better for Facebook. I would prefer the plugin to just analyze a bit and see if uh, one of these images is better for Facebook and just take the better one. Because perhaps there is a vertical image and those generally look very, very bad on Facebook if they're automatically posted. But an horizontal image generally looks much better. So I would prefer the plugin to have some knowledge on this. Um, Right now I lost the option of editing the meta description. I could edit it in the excerpt, but it, right now I cannot do this. So I would love to have this, even if I need to code it a bit. If you still uh, want to use the plugin, despite of what I said, what what are my advice? What is my advice? You should uh, first of all be informed. You should know. So there are quite a few settings which uh, the plugin has, and you should know how to understand most of them. And uh, you should verify the output. So just take the website and go to page source. Right click and view page source or control U or control F3. But generally click right click uh, view page source or go to menu view page source. Generally you, you will find it somewhere in here. Look, right now I cannot because I'm, I'm, I'm already in page source. But generally this is the, the method. So find the menu, view, page source. 
and uh, just look in there at the code. But you should have some knowledge, so for this you need to be informed on the options the plugin has. As a conclusion to everything I said in here, the plugin is quite well. So, I, uh, um, if you have a small website with less than 50 pages and with uh, less than 50 visitors per day, I would co very much consider keeping it and using it. Perhaps I would put a very good uh, plugin for caching and it would not matter as much uh, what the plugin does, but it would still matter. So, uh, for a small website I would consider using it because all of these require quite some effort and some verifications and then some updates, ah, it's too complicated. But, if you have a website for which you care, which is important to you, uh, which has a lot of visitors and lots of pages, which drives a lot of traffic to your website, I would consider having alternative solutions to making the website optimized. Uh, the, pl the plugin is not a bad option, but there are better alternatives. Because what you need mostly is not internal SEO, like making the website better for Google, but you need mostly people to feel good and to like your website and to link to it. And if the website loads poorly and they don't like the website for this reason, and you've just lost a link and you have an unhappy customer, that's much more important than some, what I don't know, code which the plugin adds for Google. And there are alternatives which put uh, some smaller load on the website. Okay, thank you very much.